almost five days. So as you can see, the brushes have been, you know, when I put the top coat on, the brushes have stayed the shape. So now the only thing that's holding it together is the um, the top coat, which is very easily clean. I'm gonna use some monomer. And I'm gonna show you um, how nice and smooth they're gonna be. Once I clean it with monomer. So see that? It stayed the shape, whatever I shaped it, it stayed. That means that when I clean it with monomer, because monomer will break down pretty much anything, um, especially to regular top coat monomers won't be as, uh, it's not as strong, so monomer will break it down easily. So, you have to clean my brushes and see there's no acrylic in there, everything is nice and smooth. And the brush, see it held the shape. See that? This brush, when I, when I first started it, if you guys remember my old video, it had acrylic in it, it was flared out. And see, the monomer would just simply dissolve very, uh, I mean, the top coat simply dissolve very easily in the monomer, and you'll be able to get your brush right back to normal. So the brush has been sitting like this for a while, so that means that it's gonna sh hold its shape, right? And it's also gonna be nice and clean. A little bit, little bit more top coat here, but there is no acrylic in there, because remember, I use acetone. Um, a lot of people told me, hey, use brush cleaner, don't use acetone, use, you know, monomer. Yeah, you can do that too, but the fact is that I'm doing a deep cleaning and I'm not worried about my, my brush being dried out from the monitor because I'm going to be adding oils and holding the shape back together, okay? Yeah, thank you. And look at that. Nice and clean, no acrylic. And look, see the brush? Even I put in the monomer, it holds the shape. It's holding the shape because we have set the, um, uh, the, the shape like that with the, the top coat. Because this is regular top coat I use to seal it in. I just put top coat on both sides, and now I'm just gonna clean up nicely. And I really, really love this technique, guys, um, this method. And yes, um, you can use brush cleaner, but a lot of people say brush cleaner is less harmful. You guys remember, brush cleaner has acetone in it. It's just a mixture of acetone, it's just, it's just less strong, that's all. I think brush cleaner is like 60%, uh, it's like the, the, uh, the, um, the polish remover you remove you get at like a Walmart or at like a CVS. That's kind of like a brush cleaner because they don't they don't have it 100% acetone. It's about 60% acetone and they mix other stuff in there. Maybe some oil, some other solution. Uh, that's why it gives it that color, blue color or something like that. And that is not as strong as acetone. If you have a brush that's already been caked in with acrylic and you are pretty much, you know, I want to throw it away or a brush that's just poofed out, um, you want to just might as well use acetone. It's, it's just a lot stronger and it'll remove everything you need to remove. See that? And all the brushes are right back to normal. And I do this every three months. I want something like, or if I forget to clean a brush properly and left it and it, it got acrylic kicked in. The moment you have acrylic kicked in, it's so hard to clean it because um, you have to break down all the acrylic. So brush cleaner, is, maybe it'll work, but not as strong as fast as, as my acetone. That's why I use acetone. Um, to each his own, you can use brush cleaner if you want, but as you can see, the results, all the brushes, look, they're not frayed out, they're nice and soft and smooth, and now I can just go back through and do some application, I'm gonna get my wave gel powder out, and I'm gonna test it, because you'll know by the moment you test it, if there's acrylic stuck to it, then you didn't do a good job, but if there's no acrylic stuck to it, you did an amazing job. Look at that, look at that shape, it holds its shape, guys. So you want to do a few, hey, how are you? You work on fixing your brush? Yes, it's a perfect time. You can watch my old video. It should be on here, still saved on here in, in the video. Look at that. Look at that bead. See that? And when you pick up the brush, this is pigment. A little bit excess. No acrylic stuck on the brush. Nice and even. And the brush keeps its shape. I'm telling you, I, I, I will show you guys before and after. I'm not BSing you guys, this is a very good method. And I can brush through my acrylic without having any acrylic stuck on here. What you see right here is the, the pigment. Very easy to remove. And just an amazing one stroke. Look at that smoothness. And these brushes are over six months old, guys. These are not brand new brushes that I, I just busted out. You guys saw when I first did this, this uh, live that these brushes were just beat up. Um, not that beat up because I do take care of them, but I want to do a video to show you guys how to do deep cleaning, save your brushes, if those you need to save brushes. And the ability to 
And also this is a Kalinsky high quality brush so it doesn't stick acrylic to it. The ability to use a brush and just, you see the smoothness? Nothing, no acrylic stuck to it. You don't have that sticky. Because the brush itself, look at the sheen. It's bad. Kalinsky is a very good quality brush. So it doesn't have any acrylic stuck to it. You may have a cheaper brush, maybe it's plastic. Um, but this isn't the case. So that's just for that. I have so many fun colors here from Wave Gel that just came out with a new line. Or you can go to wavegelshop.com. Oh, uh, Wave Gel, yep, usitshop.com and you'll be able to get these new colors. And I'm gonna use my 10 brush. I really love the 10 brush because my 10 brush is able to do a lot. See the size of this brush? People think it's too small, right? But I just gotta increase my ratio. Make sure I get a big monster's bead. Clean my brush. And a small brush like this, I've used on Extendals and XL. Um, a lot of my students use this brush. Well, in the beginning, all my students were beginners, but now not, not, not all my followers aren't beginners anymore. Everybody had a 10 brush, I guarantee you. Anybody that was a, a follower of mine in the beginning all had a 10 brush. They all upgraded to 14s and 16s now. So proud of them. Look at that, you're able to actually use the whole brush. There's a lot of control with this brush. And this powder with my monomer is very, very good. My monomer is like part of the best selling monomer right now for on my best selling thing on my page anyways. It's always sold out because people just my students and they just eat it up. They use it in class and they love it. Yeah, smoothness guys. The brush. A nice small brush can do a one bead on this. And that was the earlier one with the green I did my 16. This is my 10. Look at the size difference. But you can still do the same amount of work. Okay? So it's based on what you like and what you prefer. And here's my 14. And let's do a different color. This peachy color will be nice. Wave Gel has done a really good job re revamping these colors and making them nice and buttery, especially um, <laughs> with my monomer. I remember when I helped them do this powder, I, I used my monomer and I was like, you know, hey, can we get to do this? So I made the adjustment based on my monomer. So I just love the way I can pick up with these brushes, the way I crimp them, I can pick up a nice bead like that. It's not, it's not flow, look, it's not, you see how the, the powder is not moving? I said it won't flood, but whenever I wanted to work with it, it moves nice and buttery. Look at that. How many times have we placed beads on there and they just either it's too stiff? It looks stiff, right? But look at the brush in action. If you can do application like this, guys, there's no, there's just slight hand filing. You don't have to do any drilling. The thickness is so good. I love, I love using the brush to brush. A lot of people will dab, 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 dab and move the powder. But look, this powder does not need to do that. Nice and smooth consistency. And my brush will do a lot of the work for me. That's beautiful. You guys seen a lot of videos of people doing application. You're just like, what the heck is going on? I don't like it. I sometimes see people do application and they're just like slapping, dabbing. Mm. Definitely need to purchase. You love the consistency? Yes, it is. Um, you can go to Way Gel Shop. I think it's wavegelshop.com promo code now you can use my promo code too let me let me put it into the pin link so you guys can have it don't you get lifting since you use oil condition no you don't because um gabrielle i clean the oil when you clean it you clean the oil out of it Okay, when you, when you, once, once it's done, when, uh, when you, when it's time to clean it, you clean all the oil out of it. So of course you're gonna use, not gonna use that same monomer. I'm just using this monomer just because I'm doing samples, but you would probably just use a little bit of monomer to clean it out and get it all out. The oil does not stick onto the brush. The oil will get broken down and oil will get removed easily. Um, 
I really like this nude too. It's like almost like a um, terracotta. You guys know what terracotta? Almost like a clay. So no, you, of course you would not use the same monomer. Look at that bead. You guys know why we do round beads? It's very important. Round beads are very important. Most of the time, this will start flooding all over the place, right? Look how buttery that is. Now this is not, now this is just my monomer's medium consistency. That's why it keeps it like this. So my, my monomer would do this for any powder, really. As long as you get the right ratio, and when I wanna move it, let's move it. Look at it, it moves nice and even. It's not too wet, not too runny, not too dry. Lightly, use my acrylic brush and just move the powder through the nail. Brush motion. Look at that. I don't think there's any better pairing than my monomer and wave gel powder right now on this market. It's just so amazing. Anybody can do this. You know why? Oop, I have a little hair there. Um, because this monomer works so well, anybody can do this. You can use this monomer with any powder, but because this is a medium consistency, it won't let the powder run, but it also won't let the powder dry because it's 100% EMA. And we all know the EMA on with this powder. This is what you look for when you do application. That smoothness. No bumps. Nothing. This will allow you to do a quick hand filing. Let's see some questions there. Do you have a video on how to break a new brush? Breaking a new brush is the same way, uh, uh, Alessandra. Breaking a brush is a new brush will have a seal into it. Uh, it just like the same how I broke into the brushes in the beginning of this video. You just gotta clean it with monomer. Make sure you get all of it out consistently so that you won't have any issue with that. Um, that's how you break in a new brush. It's really nice and lavender. As you can see, I'm used neons to nudes and have you guys seen any marbling? There's no marbling at all with these powders. So wave gel's really gotten it down to a science in this. Generally when you use colors like this, there's like a marbling, it'll turn like light pink or, or, or light lavender or something like that. Look, it's not even marbled. You know, use these lavender colors you guys have seen uh, on a, uh, when other companies will try to demo it and you'll see it's like lavender, it's like marbling, look. Look at this lavender. That won't even run. I just gotta nudge it and it'll stay in place. Is that no marbling? You don't see any light or white or, or, or light lavender. It's just a nice, nice purple lavender. Lightly work with it not too runny and the thing about this is it dries guys it dries it's not gonna stay rubbery you know sometimes you use really high pigmented colors that look really nice but it won't do what it just won't dry see the powder it dries it's the core powder it dries so you don't have to worry about capping you I don't have to cap this powder at all Yes, because let people know that boiling their brushes will ruin them. Boiling their brushes? Oh, good Lord. Don't do that, please. Don't boil your brushes. Thank you, Patricia. How you know when is a good foundation that won't break? How you know when you have a good foundation that won't break? Um, easily. You, if you, the way you lay your acrylic, if it's a good uh, thickness, you have a proper apex based on the length, then it won't break. Um, you, you definitely know just by working on your clients. If your clients are having breaking problems, then you, you might have to adjust your, 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 um, your, um, your uh, thickness and how you how you position it so basically do the stuff on the previous video um, no yes from this video the previous video I, I soaked it you don't need to if you have a fresh brush you don't need to be soaking it in acetone the brush is brand new but the beginning of this video when I'm cleaning the brush in the monomer that's what you're gonna be doing when you're cleaning a fresh brush I do have videos on uh, cleaning fresh brushes I'm confused by not drying. Not drying means there are companies that will make highly pigmented colors and it won't marble. There's a lot of pigment in it compared to acrylic. So when you apply it, it stays rubbery because there's not enough acrylic to dry that, that thickness of that, that nail. You know what I mean? So acrylic is the only thing that hardens. Pigment doesn't harden. So when you have a high pigmented color, yes, it looks nice and vibrant and it won't marble, but... Your client says she was going to be five minutes. Okay. So, but then another issue is that 
you are gonna be, uh, it won't dry because there's not enough acrylic there to dry the pigment. So a lot of nail techs run into that issue when they run into it, they get really pigment colors, like hot pinks, like like like, you know, like this hot pink. Um, if you mix acrylic into it, uh, too much acrylic to it, it won't, it will, it will marble because the pigment will separate from the, uh, uh, the acrylic. But Wave Gel has finessed it to a point where they've gotten the right ratio that it stays nice and vibrant without marbling when you're working with it. And then also it dries. That's very important. It dries. Look, this looks like it's hardened, right? No, look, when I wanna work with it, it will move with my brush. See? Flooding where? Look, I can go get lunch right now, come back, and still be able to work with it. I'm not, I'm just kidding, don't put a bead on it, go get lunch and come back, okay? I'm just saying you have a lot of time. As long as you're using the right monomer, my monomer is medium consistency, so it's gonna keep the bead firm, but also gives it the ability to be able to be worked on. So that right is like a perfect combination with wave gel powder. You see? Very simple, right? So most of the time, uh, if this was really high pigmented, it's not correctly rough, right? This will never dry. It will dry, but it will stay rubbery. So you have to cap it with clear. Most time people cap it with clear. I have the black powder that doesn't harden. I have to cap it. Yes, black powder will do that because to get black, you have to have a lot of pigment. Because if they mix too much clear in it, the black uh, the black won't be black. It'll be more gray, right? So let's do this mid color. I love this mid. Well, I didn't even open this yet. Oh my God, look at this. It's like a mint. <sighs> Beautiful. This is a wave gel acrylic. In the pin link below, we can go to wavegelshop.com. You can use my promo code, okay, and buy their, their, their acrylic. This is their new formula. Look at this mint. I love this mint. See? With my monomer, you place it down, it won't bleed. It won't flood. I have a little bit of that hot pink mixed in here, but that's okay. This is just for demo purposes. When I want to move it, I move it. And I move with brush motions. I don't dab it, I brush it down because I think a brush motion is the best way to move powder because it uses the whole brush and smooths everything out. If you dab, 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 you're gonna put boom, 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 pressure into certain spots and it's gonna be uneven, okay? Uneven as in it might be, it might look smooth, but then there's gonna be spots that are thicker and thinner. It's almost like a Tiffany, a minty color. Look at these hot pinks. Not one speck of marbling. And look, it's dry. I'm a new tech. I don't think I'm into acrylic not drying yet. I ran into acrylic not drying. Yeah, you probably haven't, but a lot of techs have. Do you only go live on Facebook? Yes, I don't go live on Facebook. Because a lot of my community is here. None of them are. If it's marbling, you will see it in the powder. Sometimes you run to slight marbling issues, but that's just because some powders cannot be fixed with that, but certain colors. But uh, in another sense, um, if you run to marbling issues, it's more of um, how quick you work with it. When you work with it and you have enough time to use a brush and brush it in, the marbling will go away. So a lot of times when we're tap, 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 tapping, we're not actually brushing the, the, the pigment into the powder. So that's why you're getting that marbling issue, okay? So remember that. So I'm gonna just, you know, just use my brushes, of course. I'm gonna clean it. There's gonna be a little bit of a pigment stuck in here, see? The pigment from the last one. And I'm gonna make sure I clean my brushes. But the last one turns to a purple color. It, it turns to a purple color because I had this monomer has been contaminated with all these pigments. So then the monomer transfer over to a lighter color. I wouldn't recommend you using a, a tinted monomer, but this is for just sample purposes. That's why it does that. So the monomer had the, the, the pigment in there. So when I press into this light color, the light color would take on the, the, the pigment. 
but that that happens i mean that's normal so i just wanted to show you guys a little bit how i finish off my um uh, my my um my brush there because i know that uh the couple days before when before i left for san jose i showed you guys how to deep clean them with acetone and how to prep them and keep their shape now see i put them back in action and they're good as new and you can do this once in a while you can do it and there's sometimes you, there's, there's some brushes that you won't be able to do this for anymore but this is for like a last ditch last like ditch like you know a uh, chance to save the brush for you have to spend another 30 40 dollars on another brush and it may help you keep the brush for a little, a little bit longer why not okay so on the brushes i'm gonna quickly clean them quickly clean them real quick before i restore them make sure i feather through make sure there's no acrylic in them good Love watching you just get the idea of beauty work. Thank you. I got rid of the powder I was using. The marble was terrible. I want to invest in some more. Yeah. I mean, you got to really figure out, you know, not every powder made the same. And a lot of people run into marbling issues and they think that that's how the powder is supposed to be. No, it's not. Um, a lot of people do, like, like you know, a lot of companies have to avoid that because if you are a, a company that's selling acrylic powder and marbles and you can't fix that i'm paying good money i'm not paying it for it to marble okay if i want to marble i use a marbling technique <laughs> got a little bit of acrylic stuck here so i'll make sure i'm gonna push it out first before i clean it again and this monomer is very old i just went through and did a bunch of sample sticks and there we go Let me see if I have some questions here. No more questions. Well, I have a client coming in soon, so I'm gonna prepare for her. It's gonna be only set today. I might live it, I might not. Um, I gotta remake my uh, Instagram account. You guys noticed uh, my Instagram account got hacked. I don't know why I even pinned it on there. I have to make a new one until Instagram get my old one back, which I don't know when. Um, you know, there's always haters out there that <laughs> I don't know why they target me, but I guess they do. So. With that being said, thank you guys for joining me. I'm, I'm always going to be here on Facebook, so even if I get hacked, all my followers and community, they know where to find me. And of course, um, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to show you guys how I finished the brushes, that it does work. The brushes are back to a very good condition. And I wish the best for everyone that's tried this. And hopefully you guys.